my question is on Afghanistan. Uh, Taliban has come out with a new rule that women uh, and girls can't go to school. Their right of education has been denied. What's the official reaction of the Indian government? Also, if the Indian government or the EMEA can react on the public execution by Taliban, if there can be a reaction on that as well. Uh, any particular incident you are mentioning or generally? No, the second part. Ah, in the past. ہم <laughs> ہمارے طرف سے 
फार्मेसी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड के रूप में हमने मदद की है दूसरे देशों को और चाइना में जो हो रहा मैंने जैसे कहा हम करीब से नजर बनाए रखे हुए हैं और ट्रैवल रेगुलेशन में अगर कोई अपडेट हो बताएंगे और एडवाइजरी की भी हमारी तरफ से भी कोई एडवाइजरी जारी नहीं हुई है हमारी अपेक्षा यही रही कि जो भी कोई रहता है किसी देश में वहां के हेल्थ गाइडलाइंस जो भी हो उस उनको वो पूरी तरह मानकर चले जैसे हमारे देश में जो फॉरेनर्स है वो हमारे हेल्थ गाइडलाइंस फॉलो करते हैं इसी तरह दूसरे देशों में जब लोग रहते हैं उनकी जो लोकल हेल्थ गाइडलाइंस है जो फॉरेनर्स वहां रहते हैं इंडियन वो उसको फॉलो करेंगे बट कोई स्पेसिफिक गाइडलाइन हमारे तरफ से अभी इशू नहीं किया है महा मूविंग ऑन टू योर कोर कमांड लुक आई फील टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंसिडेंट एट तवांग um i think uh, raksha mantri ji made a detailed statement both house of parliament and with parliament in session it not be appropriate to say anything beyond that i don't have any further information to share um so asini you mentioned on an mou look we have seen reports on this uh to be honest uh, let me just give you a sense of this um different states uh, do make trips abroad to promote investment and other activities so the states they do sign mous and these are done directly by the states our embassies and consulates extend whatever necessary assistance is required uh, i don't have anything particular on this uh, mou or this visit uh, yes our consulate of course extended assistance to the delegation but the mous for that you will have to ask the state government they would have a better fix on that uh, i'm not even sure the query regarding you said due diligence um, i'm not sure it's, it's not our mou so i would uh, i would refer you to the state government I think they may already made some statements, and I would refer you to that. Um, yeah, second round question. Ah, uh, oh. Okay, one second. Sorry, Afghanistan. Pe, you. I have just the Taliban issue. Pe. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Look, in this, we have seen reports. We note our concerns with them. Bharat has discussed the issue of women in Afghanistan. Ke mudde का लगातार समर्थन किया है हमने एक समावेशी और प्रतिनिधि सरकार का स्थापना को महत्व पर जोर दिया है जो सभी अफगानों को अधिकारों का सम्मान करती है और उच्च शिक्षा तक एक्सेस सहित अफगान समाज के सभी पहलुओं में भाग लेने के लिए महिलाओं और लड़कियों के समान अधिकारों का सुनिश्चित करती है को सुनिश्चित करती है इसी कॉन्टेक्स्ट uh, में जो संयुक्त राष्ट्र सुरक्षा परिषद के प्रस्ताव uh, 2593 का भी याद करूंगा जो महिलाओं और मान, की मानव अधिकारों के महत्व की पुष्टि करता है और महिलाओं की पूर्ण समान और सार्थक भागीदारी का भी आह्वान करता है रिलेटेड नो ओके गो हेड नो बिफोर दैट प्लीज सुनजय this is on the tawang situation you did say that rm has spoken but it appears that the chinese have been coming here earlier as well they came on the 28th of september last year so is there any understanding on why this particular area is being targeted and can i ask a question as opposed uh, there have been reports of Uh, the saudi government saying that for examinations at least and maybe other cases they need the the students female students should wear the uniform and not the abaya or any other kind of covering could you give us some understanding about what the indian government has to say about it or what the facts are in this case okay. um for a question sorry ईरान ने स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप के लिए भारत को ऑफर दिया है इस पर इंडिया का क्या रिएक्शन ईरान ने स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप के लिए भारत को ऑफर दिया आ, है ऐसी खबरें मीडिया में अच्छा है मैं तो चाहता हूं फ्रॉम पता नहीं कुछ इस पर इस पर इंडिया का स्टैंड है आपका क्या ओके ओके स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप का सॉरी हु वाज दैट समबडी देयर या 
Reza from Hindustan Times. Uh, I just wanted a follow up. Uh, I, want, I wanted to ask a follow up question on Afghanistan. Uh, there is mounting evidence that uh, LET and JEM uh, theaters are now in Afghanistan. This is something that we have raised at the UNSC. Uh, does India have any plans to work with its international partners on this issue? Number two, uh, there is also. Which issue, sorry? On the issue of LET JEM theaters being in Afghanistan. Number two, there are a lot of concerns about how, you know, there could possibly be the misuse of any funds that are now provided to the Taliban uh, for humanitarian work or any other reasons from their frozen assets. Uh, is India concerned about In what this? context is this concern? I didn't understand. I mean, Who are they you know, concerned? The Taliban are requesting for the funds to be given to them, but, you know, the funding, the channels are not open. The, the, you know, the official channels are not open. Do we have concerns about, you know, the misuse of, possible misuse of any of these funds? Okay. Go ahead. I'll come back. Microphone. If you could keep mobiles on silent. So this is a little query about the uh, talks which I to introduce on. yourself for a call, otherwise poor transcript person. So this is Manal Pratim Bhuyan from PTI. It's a little query about the China-India talks, uh, seven round of talks. As the talks took place so just 11 uh, days after the Tawang incident, was the issue actually flagged by Indian team during the talks, the Tawang incident? In the talks? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me try to answer this round of questions. I'll come back to, I think, a few more hands. Um, look, I understand there are a couple of questions on Tawang, two, maybe three questions. As I said, I think, I think Raksha Mantriji made a detailed statement. I don't have anything further to add. If you're looking at the why the military, uh, specifically Shinja, you asked why here, has it happened in the past? Yes, there have been incidents, locations where, in the past, where uh, we have, uh, you know, stood firm, as you, you are aware of that, and we've been emphasizing that uh, our uh, you know, soldiers will uh, stand firm to guard our frontiers. So I don't want to say anything beyond that, because I think that clarity has been issued, and if you want, from looking at from a military perspective, I would refer you to the MOD. I, I'm not going to speculate here on why, which specific locations. As regards the Saudi government, I don't know how that's a foreign policy issue, so I'm not going to be able to comment on that. I haven't... Our embassy has not received any formal communication in this regard from the Saudi authorities. You've seen some media reports, but I don't want to get into that. Um, uh, Manas, in the similar perspective, look, this is all uh, that we have to say. Uh, sorry, where did Manas go? Uh, sorry. Um, this, is, um, this is all that we have to say for the moment. Uh, the talks happened on the 20th. Um, we can all speculate, but I, since I don't have a confirmation, I am not going to be able to confirm that. Um, we did talk about, that was more to be honest about the Western sector. So if it has not been, I wouldn't be surprised. But let me not make a comment either way. I'm not, I'm not aware of the details. Uh, Pia, I wouldn't have an offhand comment. I don't keep a track of all political clearance requests that come. Now, I'll have to check. Um, I also am not sure whether I'm in a position to be able to tell you as a matter of policy whether who all are applied at which point. So I may not be able to come back with anything to share. Um, if there is something specific that you're looking for, I can try to find out, but otherwise I don't have any information on that. Madhurendra ji, if we have any questions about communication, I will tell you about it. 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 Reza, on your comments or rather questions on two aspects. I think the issue of working with international partners to, against terrorism is something that you would have seen we have been putting a lot of emphasis on. Um, let me uh, draw attention to, we organized a counterterrorism committee meeting uh, here in Delhi, uh, preceded by a meeting, informal briefing in, in you know, um, Mumbai. Uh, we had uh, discussions here under the No Money for Terror. We had highlighted as one of the signature events in our presidency at the UN on terrorism. <coughs> so clearly we are interested in working with the international community against terrorism from wherever it emanates. Um, so I think that goes without saying. Um, in, in so far specifically as Afghanistan is concerned, you would have, I would refer to uh, Resolution 2593, which has a pretty strong uh, language on what the expectations of the international community is vis-a-vis -vis terrorism emanating from Afghanistan. As regards funds to Taliban, I don't know a specific response to that because I'm not sure what concerns you are referring to, but um, if you've been following the developments in the United Nations Security Council, a few days ago there was a resolution uh, regarding um, access to funds uh, for humanitarian purposes and while in, cons in, you know, 
in principle, that's uh, something that we work with and we support. There were certain concerns that we had, and accordingly, we abstained on that <coughs> resolution. Uh, clearly, we, we do believe that uh, there are possibilities of misuse of such opportunities, and hence our position on that resolution. So let me, let me limit myself to that. Okay, who had a few set, more set of questions? Uh, one thing, please start. Uh, uh, hi, sir. Uh, it's Abhishek uh, from uh, CNN News 18. Uh, my question is regarding uh, recent uh, civil unrest uh, happening in Pacific Island. Fiji, uh, Fiji uh, there have been reports of uh, Indian uh, people of Indian descendants being targeted. Uh, how are you looking at the situation? Has there been any advisory for Indians living in Fiji or uh, anything? Indians living in Fiji, right? Uh, and also the people of Indian origin. Who are you don't want to give them advice. Of course, you're not. Just, just clarifying that issue <laughs> before you start. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just go ahead. So, Sridhar. Yeah. Sridhar, go ahead. Sridhar from the Asian Age. Uh, so, there are uh, about 200 meetings uh, as announced, uh, scheduled for the G20 in the run-up of the summit. Now, given this current COVID scare, um, is there a move to make it a virtual, virtual mode or will it affect the physical attendance at these meetings? And secondly, are you uh, staying with the same subject? Are, are you also gearing up for uh, sort of an evacuation operation like we saw in 2020? Um, because uh, the, uh, you have China, Japan, South Korea, US, all these countries. Sorry, sorry. I'm not going to accept loose questions. What evacuation operation from where? Uh, of uh, Indian, are you gearing ah, up? I'm sorry, from those countries. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, I sorry, I missed you last time. I'll come back. Uh, <coughs> Good afternoon, sir. This is from the Mint. Sir, the CAG released its report, uh, audit report of the Ministry of External Affairs two days ago. It alleged uh, that there were, it pointed out that there were irregularities uh, that caused uh, the exchequer a loss of around 58 crores because of the misapplying of OCI fees. The Ministry of External Affairs said it was a notional loss. The CAG did not accept that sufficient. Could you give us a considered sense of what the Ministry's position is on this mischarging of fees? Okay. Uh, yeah. Nainima, and then I'll go to the last one. Nainima from ABP Live. Uh, just wanted to understand, it's been six months since we opened the embassy, uh, our mission in Kabul. What exactly has been done so far? Have we resumed some of the stalled projects? In terms of humanitarian aid, what is it that is going on? If you can give us some updates. Thanks a lot. Hi, sir. Akshay Dogre from India Today. I have two questions, sir. Uh, first is, uh, uh, there is an investigation done by India Today that shows that Jaisha Mohammed, after Pakistan has got out of the grey list of FADFs, uh, they have started to raise more funds in the name of building mosques in Pakistan. So is NEA keeping an eye on that? Uh, second is about Charles Shobraj, since he has been freed. Um, just, uh, uh, we normally have one question, but I'm noticing a lot more of these yes. two is coming in. But uh, <laughs> uh, Charles Shobraj, now that he has been freed, uh, uh, are we seeking uh, uh, a custody of Charles Shobraj? given the fact that he has fled from Indian jails as well? I, okay, let me, I, I'm not sure how to answer that one. Any others? I'll close with this. Okay, um, look, uh, Abhishek, I wasn't clear of your question. I, of course, um, develop, as you know, Fiji has just, um, you know, come, I think concluded or going through the process of election, and we look forward to the, you know, formation of government and working with the new government there. Yes, yes, I'm aware of it. Um, our, as regards developments in that country, our uh, High Commission there, of course, is keeping a close eye on the developments. We are also monitoring uh, developments that happen. Uh, I haven't heard anything about against Indians, so Indian citizens, certainly. We haven't issued any advisory as far as I'm aware. But as regards uh, Fijian, you know, Fijian uh, nationals, if there is anything particular to add, I will come back to you on that. Um, as I said, we are closely monitoring developments there. I don't have an immediate comment on it. Uh, for the moment, but yes, we are in touch with the High Commission. Uh, Sridhar, um, on your question, yes, there are more than 200 odd meetings that we have planned. Some of them already taken place during uh, December. Um, our expectation and our objective is to have these meetings in physical format. Uh, whether we, you know, as and when, and if we have to change these uh, these guidelines or this plan, we'll let you know. For the moment, we do plan to have these meetings in physical format. Um, so that's what I would say. On, on the evacuation, I'm not sure if that's, a, if that's a concern or these Indians there want to come back. Um, I think flights are operating normally from most of these countries, uh, except China where we don't have direct flights, but there are other ways to come. Those who wish to come back can come back. I haven't heard any, any requirement even of trying to bring people back or a situation of COVID that would 
required. Yeah. We'll see how the developments, what's been recent developments. I don't have any anything to share on that. Um, before I come to Shashank, uh, Nanima, I wouldn't have an immediate response on that simply because, uh, as I've been em emphasizing, this is a technical team with a task largely and focused on humanitarian assistance that we provide to the people of Afghanistan. I am not, I know this issue of discussion of whether projects have resumed, have come up earlier. Um, I am not aware of any, any particular new project or anything that has started, but any humanitarian assistance that we continue to ex uh, extend to the people of Afghanistan, yes, our team is involved in that. I don't have a ready reckoner for the last six months what we have done, but I've noted that. I'll ask my colleagues if there's something if they have to share, I'll come back to you at some point. Um, sorry, anything particular on this? Microphone. So, Hasini, again, the Taliban statement on the mission in Kabul mm. actually uh, names the head of the Indian mission, Mr. Bharat Kumar, and, and calls him the charge day affairs. Is that technically wrong? As I said, I am not going to comment on uh, other people commenting how they how they uh, designate our people. It's a technical team, and he's the head of technical team. <coughs> so, from our perspective, uh, coming back to uh, sorry. Um, Akshay Dogre, uh, you had asked regarding, look, I, I don't have specific information on, on such operational issues. Um, we have, of course, been emphasizing the importance of ensuring that, um, you know, Pakistan's cross-border terrorism uh, is stopped, that it does not, and you will see in our recent statement in that regard. Um, if organizations that you named are trying to uh, do that, and I don't think it's a new development, Yes, I would expect uh, that the international community will continue with its efforts to stop such things. We certainly uh, monitor uh, or, and take steps to ensure that everything, we are protected from that. Uh, on the Charles Chopra, I don't think it's a foreign policy issue. I, if there is some legal proceedings against him underway, then our, uh, legal, our other agencies, particularly Home Affairs, I guess, would, would know. I'm not aware, and nor do I wish to make a comment on it. Uh, Shashank, um, uh, you referred to the CAG report. Uh, this is a routine, uh, as you know, um, we, like most other government departments, are subject to audit, um, including from the CAG, but we have other levels of audit, and on a regular basis, audit is carried out at various stages, at various levels of both our missions abroad as well as our uh, Ministry of External Affairs. As part of these, there are audit ob uh, observations, um, and which some of them become, uh, come and as audit paras and subsequently audit paragraphs of the CAG, and these are tabled in Parliament uh, when the CAG feels that it requires it to do so. That is mandate under the Constitution. Uh, this is now uh, a property of the Parliament and I certainly would like to explain further and let this be as part of the parliamentary process. Our comments on it are as part of when the CAG presents its report, it also puts on record what the Ministry said. I don't have anything additional to say to that. And there is a process in which these are handled uh, and we will certainly um, you know, take forward what the guidance from the Parliament is. Thank you very much. Uh, you have more questions now. I thought we had the last one. No, you're the second one. I'll take his. Yes. Uh, sir, Shalandra News, the team. Yeah. One of the things we've seen is that the level of the talks are happening. You've also told me that the last meeting was in the last meeting. But there was another mechanism that started in 2003, the SR level talks. The last meeting was in 2019. Has it been defunct? Because the main question is that it's going to be addressed at this level. Hai. Wo so why are those talks not happening? Is it because both NSS are in touch with both the SR level representatives are in touch with or not? When will the next meeting be? I have four questions, but anyway, I have to ask you. Who has a question? Uh, you are there. Okay, I have before. Yeah, please, go ahead. Uh, Manish Chang, uh, on the China COVID issue, have we uh, uh, taken it up with China? Has, has there been any discussion? Has China given any official update on this at all? Uh, number two on the... No, no, I'm, this is not a multiple round question. question. No, no, just one more. <laughs> just a brief question. Uh, this is on, on Tawang issue, have we been in touch with the U.S. on the Tawang incursions at all? China, COVID, you asked, no? No, no, hold on. No, hold on. Somebody has a question here. You had a second round of questions. All of you. I think we'll put a stop. Is something related to this? What is that? Uh, sir, my question is, uh, like, uh, like, only few days are left in this year, so... Uh, will India-Russia summit or talk is officially cancelled? Cancelled? I mean, uh, is, is that going to happen or not? Okay. And who had, you have something else to add? Okay. No, I'm not getting around. Everybody wants, has second thoughts. Something related, interesting, immediate? <laughs> yeah, everything. Go ahead, quickly. Uh, 
Uh, sir, we saw the comments by the Pakistani Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto. Uh, do you think after those comments it will be much difficult for India-Pakistan conversation to happen? Uh, there, there are no conversations already happening, so will it be tough now? I mean, his comments are something, we saw the reaction by the MEA as well. Your question is very And is he coming for the SEO? What is he? <laughs> okay, uh, somebody has, sir, you have you to supplement it to that. Okay, I'll stop with you. Yours is the last one. Yeah, go ahead, quick. So, so you, I just want to ask, you know, for Microphone. Uh, you know, these, uh, are you going to restrict uh, Chinese uh, participants from for coming uh, for the G20 event, uh, factoring in that COVID. COVID is so high? Okay. Okay, let me close here. Um, Shalendra ji, aapne jo uh, pucha. Dekhye, uh, different mechanisms hai. Maine aapka bhi satrave core commander level meeting ke baare mein zikr kiya, unke baare mein bataya, us readout kya tha. Uh, SR level talks ka bhi apna ek objective hota hai, urka ek uh, guidance rata hai, wo highest level pe rata hai in fact. Ab kyu nahi hua, is mein mein speculate nahi karunga, ho, nahi ho paai hai, na, na, na mere paas date hai, but defunct mein nahi maanunga. Jab avishak rahegi ya time rahega hai, dono taraf se, uh, unke dono ke uh, side se agreement hogi, to agla round ho, ho, hoga SR level talks ka. 2003 se jaysa hai apne kaha, ho rahi hai. So, defunct kehna kal, uh, correct nahi hoga, kyunki har level ka apna objective hota hai, core commander level ka ek कोर के बारे में डिस्कशन होता है इनफैक्ट किसी ने मुझे पूछा था भी वेस्टर्न साइड में हो रहा है तो तमाम की बात हुई थी यानी बट हर लेवल पे डिफरेंट होता है ये बाउंड्री इश्यूज के रिलेटेड है और कोर कमांडर लेवल बाउंड्री इश्यूज इस पे नहीं है तो हर चीज का अपना एक ऑब्जेक्टिव रहता है मनीष यू हैड आस्क्ड रिगार्डिंग आर वी इन टच विद द यूएस साइड एट ऑल ऑन आई ऑन तवांग इज लुक आई डोंट नो व्हाट यू हैव इन दैट माइंड ऑन तवांग एज आई रिपीट थर्ड टाइम uh, Raksha Manti ji has made a comprehensive statement in parliament. I have nothing further to add. Our privileged communications with foreign leaders or foreign countries, I, I have nothing particular to share. I'm not even sure what we will raise with the U.S. side vis-a-vis -vis this uh, development. And on the China uh, COVID issue, again, I'm not sure. This is a health emergency. I'm not sure what you would like us to take with the Chinese authorities. Our embassy, of course, is monitoring developments, and we have Indian citizens there. But as I said, uh, we expect uh, citizens uh, when they're in a foreign country will follow the health guidelines of that country. So there's not, it's not a foreign policy issue as such. Uh, there was a related part, I think so you asked issue on, look, if there are uh, new guidelines that come in on uh, how, what are the restrictions, if any, on particular regions or particular um, geographies, then that will be applicable to all those people. So I don't know whether it'll be G20 specific or not. As of now, I don't have any information on any additional guidelines or restrictions on um, entry into India, except, and this is anyway done by uh, health authorities and civil aviation and other agencies, so I don't think we are the lead on this. And on the issue that I think you asked uh, regarding statements, I think, look, we have made our um, position quite clear on that statement of uncivilized outburst. Uh, separately on conversations, look, both countries have um, their own missions in that country, so to say there will be no conversations or will conversations become difficult, I don't know what you had in mind. And I, I don't think I have an immediate comment on that. Um, we have always said, um, you know, talks uh, are uh, predicated upon conducive environment as well as uh, stop to terrorism. So I don't think that has changed much. Um, I think we we'll stop. And, and when we have a decision on when the dates of the SU and the invitations, we will let you know how that works out. Thank you. I think I'll have to stop here on that. Thank you. Good afternoon.